Rounds, Senator Rounds, please. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and to both of you, I want to thank you both for your service to our country and, and your teams as well. Um, I'd like to begin by following up with General Van Herc with regard to the same line of questioning that the chairman began with, with regard to spectrum. Uh, I, I do have real concerns about the loss of any portion of the spectrum to sales, uh, to commercial operations. And I recognize that uh, General Van Herc your role in defending uh, the homeland is, is critical. And I just wanted to clarify or at least better understand part of your response to the chairman's question. Uh, there is a study which is underway, which has been recognized by both the Secretary of Commerce and the Secretary of Defense, specifically with regarding the, the sensitivity uh, or the need to maintain or the impact of the sale of the 3.1 to 3.45 uh, gigahertz portion of the spectrum, which currently is under DOD control. or uh, Could you share with us uh, in this unclassified setting the significance of that portion of the spectrum to the defense of our country uh, at this time? Do we use all of that in the defense of our country today? Senator, absolutely we do. There are multiple platforms to include uh, maritime homeland defense platforms, airborne early warning platforms, ground-based early warning platforms that enable me to provide threat warning, attack assessment, defend from potentially uh, airborne assets, et cetera. So we need to understand the national security impacts of selling or auctioning and make a conscious decision before we do so. I also understand, and what I wanted to follow up with in particular was, would seem to me that if we're doing a study, a, a legitimate study, that there would be some participation by NORTHCOM, since this is part of the spectrum that they rely on, confirming you're not aware of being involved in that particular study at this time? Senator, I haven't personally been involved. I'll confirm the coordination with my staff, uh, but I have not personally been involved in that discussion. I would welcome the opportunity to be personally involved. I, I would imagine that you probably would, sir. Um, saying as how it, it is a critical part in the defense of our country, and, and, and I thank you for when you have provided this committee with your professional military advice, it really does ring true that there is a very serious concern with the loss of any part of that spectrum, and so I, I, I appreciate that. I did want to just follow up a little bit as well with uh, Senator Cotton laid out a, a very clear line of questioning with regard to the timing and the decision-making process uh, with regard to the observation balloon from the PRC. If this was a communications gathering or, or an intelligence gathering uh, unit, you did have the ability and you could see it coming from a long ways off, several days in advance not just with intelligence uh, uh, recognition, but also with, with radar catching it. Uh, during that time period, it, there was a point at which, as, as you've indicated, it was not uh, identified as being hostile or trying to gain at, an, an offensive position, therefore still in international air, no reason to or any any uh, a purpose for taking it out at that point. That, that's correct, isn't it? There's no legal basis in international airspace to take action. That would actually undermine our position globally by taking action in international airspace. I'd like to clarify one thing. I did not have the capability to see that days away. Okay, that came through Intel community channels. Uh, I could not see it until it got within radar and I'll talk to you in a classified environment, but that, that was not days away. That was the 28th only. And, and, and on the 28th, though, on the 28th, it was still not within, it was still outside of our uh, legal operating area in terms of, of, of protecting our, our borders. So it passed within sovereign territory on the 27th at the end of the Aleutian Island chain and then back into international airspace until the 28th where it passed within uh, our sovereign space near St. Matthews Island, Alaska, and then transited over Alaska. During that time in which it had passed out into international waters, 
uh, were aware of it and knew that it had the possibility of coming back into our airspace again. But by then, pretty clear on your part that it was not an offensively armed uh, um, balloon or object. That's correct, Senator. The Intel community assessed that. That was what I verified on the 28th when we intercepted and I had fighters get it, their visual on it and their targeting pods to be able to make that assessment. Uh, that's not a 100% guarantee, but my assessment at that time based on all the info was there was no physical military threat uh, to the homeland at that point. And I think that the, the reason why I'm bringing this out and going back through it again with you is, is number one, I think the American people have to understand that it, if it would have been viewed as a threat, our armed forces would have protected and we would have taken it out prior to the point of getting in and damaging any property or individuals uh, within the United States at that time. But second piece on this is, is it became a decision, not necessarily yours, but uh, somewhere farther up the chain of command as to not to take it out, even though it was entering our airspace. It was not your decision because it was not deemed a threat uh, or to become an offensive threat at that time. Fair to say? So if it was a threat, I'm delegated the authority by the president through the secretary, and I would have taken that out. Yeah. In this case, I did not assess it as a threat, and therefore I did not have the authority. The, the, the authority would have rested with someone above you uh, depending in the on chain the, of command. Depending on the legal basis for assessment, it would have re uh, resided either with the Secretary of Defense or the President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 